can you just make some noise in this place? I want to make sure I'm in the room with some hungry women. I want to make sure I'm in some room with some women who are going to break some generational curses. I want to make sure I'm in the room with some women who did not come to play with the devil. I've had my last battle with you. You have had your last fight with my family. Make some noise for the King of Kings in this place. I believe that God is going to meet us in this place in a tremendous way. And I cannot tell you how honored I am to be here in St. Louis ministering for the first time. Can you help me honor the leadership of this great conference, Pastor Nicole? You are the bee's knees, honey. Everything you do is amazing and fabulous. Thank you for this incredible representation of what God thinks about us. All I could think while they were performing is this is what God does when he sees us walk into our light. I'm so glad. Can you please just help me thank one more time, Pastor Nicole? Listen, I've been praying and I've been studying. I want to get right into the word. If it's okay with you, I'd ask for you to stand while I read my text. It makes me feel like I'm at home. Although my husband is here and that makes me feel like I'm at home too. Can you help me honor my man. Mm. Mm. I thank the Lord. My son is here too. My friend Shanice is here. So I brought some backup. So if nobody claps, I got at least three people who promised they would clap for me. I'm going to be speaking from John 8, verse 7. This is not an unfamiliar text, but I I believe that there are some nuggets here that God is going to use to help us on our journey. My text begins, it says, so when they continued asking him, that him is Jesus, he raised himself up and said to them, he who is without sin among you, let him throw a stone at her first. And again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground, then those who heard it, being convicted by their conscience, went out one by one, beginning with the oldest even to the last, and Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. When Jesus had raised himself up and saw no one but the woman, he said to her, Woman, where are those accusers of yours? Has no one condemned you? She said, no one, Lord, and Jesus said to her, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Then Jesus spoke to them again, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of the light. Father God, at the end of the day, we have all gathered here because we want to hear from you. And so, God, I want to invite you to sit on this word, that you would anoint every word that comes out of my mouth, that it would penetrate the hearts of the women in this room. God, no distractions, no fear, no anxiety. Just for a moment, can you make our world stop so that we can hear from you? Because when we hear from you, our lives are changed. When we hear from you, we forgive. When we hear from you, we move forward. When we hear from you, we are transformed. God, let this be a moment where we hear from you. And as for me, God, I turn myself over to you. Let this be your word. Let nothing be off limits within me that can be used for your glory. And when it is all said and done, may you be glorified. In Jesus' name, amen. You guys can get comfortable now. So since this is my first time here at Faith Church and my first time ministering at St. Louis, if this is your church, make some noise. Yeah, I love that. Thank you guys for hosting me. I have invited myself to the barbecue. I am now a part of the family. There's nothing you can do about it. Um, I've been learning some things about womanhood that I just want to share with you guys just for a second, and perhaps it can be like a getting to know me kind of thing. So I have been doing keto now for 11 days. <laughs> um, and that's a miracle, and that's how everyone should know that God is still in the miracle working business, because 
If you're unfamiliar on keto, they don't let you eat carbs, they don't let you eat sugar, and um, I believe that carbs and sugar are anointed to break strongholds off of my life. When I'm stressed out, carbs are what God sends. It's the ram in the bush, if you will. And, um, but I had to come to a place where I had to get my life together. And let me tell you what God has been sharing with me about womanhood and body confidence just very quickly. Okay, so one thing he told me is like, you can't eat anything you want all of the time. Like, you know, and that should be common knowledge. But uh, common knowledge ain't so common. Come on, somebody. Um, because I don't really have any set limitations on what I can and cannot do when it comes to food. So God told me you can't just eat anything you want to anyway. So you might as well activate a lifestyle now that's going to help you get on the good foot. And I was like, all right, Lord, here I am on the good foot. And so that's one thing that I'm learning. And that's what's been helping me with keto is like you can't just eat anything you want to. So you got to have restrictions anyway. I'm like, cool, got that. Next thing is like another woman's body can't be your body goal. And that was a struggle too because sometimes when I'm strolling on Instagram or on a magazine, I see a body and I'm like, that's it. That's my body. But it's not my body. I'm going to work out until I get her body. And um, evidently, no matter how much I work out, I'm never going to have her body. So I have to have a goal that is representative of what is possible for my body. Okay, that's one thing. And the third thing that I am learning, um, first of all, the BMI calculator is a worker of iniquity. I was trying to get ready for my fit lifestyle and they gonna tell me, Psh, child, do you know how much they told me I should weigh? None of your business, but let me tell you something. They told me I should weigh something that is impossible for me to weigh. God would never allow me to weigh this. So I'm gonna work out, but I'm gonna love where I am in the process of working out. Because if I don't love where I am because I'm trying to get to where I'm headed, then I'm going to always constantly hate who I am right now. And so I call this new way of thinking for me like tangled between law and grace. I'm tangled between the law of this is where I should be, but grace that says I'm not there yet. And in order for me to get tangled between law and grace, I had to untangle myself from the mindsets and rhythms and patterns that made me feel less than. You see, the reality is that we're going to get tangled up in something in life. There's no way to avoid it. I know we like to think that we can live life as an island and I don't need anyone, but the reality is that if we do this thing the right way, I'm always going to be tangled up in life. And so I have chosen to only be tangled in what releases me to grow, not that which restricts me. Because my previous mindset that I was tangled up in and some previous friendships that I was tangled up in and some previous relationships that I was tangled up in, it restricted me from being able to grow. So if I'm going to be tangled up in something, I have to determine, am I tangled up in something that's going to help me grow? When I met my husband, I'd gone through too much. I'd been tangled up with too many situations. And I said, if I'm going to get tangled up with you, I need to know that me being tangled with you is helpful helping me to grow. It's going to help me become a better person. You got to be willing to dissect what you're tangled up in because you can't avoid getting tangled. But I got to make sure that what I'm tangled up in is helping me. I got to have a vision for who I'm connected with. I have to have a vision for what this job is. Because if I don't have a vision for it, then I could get tangled up in somebody else's mess. That doesn't help me. 
And it only takes a few times of being tangled up in someone else's mess before we realize I was actually a little bit better off by myself than before I got tangled up in this mess. There's no revelation like the revelation that comes when you get tangled up in somebody else's mess. It makes you realize that I'm not so crazy like I thought. I mean, I'm crazy, but I'm not like crazy, crazy. Like, I had to get tangled up in someone else's mess to get perspective on who I am. You would have never known how strong you were until you got tangled up in someone else's mess. You would have never known how forgiving you were until you got tangled up in someone else's mess. I didn't enjoy being tangled, but it taught me some things about myself that I never would have known unless I got tangled up in some mess. I had to go through some things. I had to go through a struggle. I had to get divorced. I had to go through some things. I got tangled up but it taught me something, taught me something about who I am. And so now I have a vision for who I am and am not willing to be tangled up with. This woman who was caught in the act of adultery, she was literally caught in the very act. My girl was tangled up when they found her. And um, because she was tangled up in something that was restricting her and something that could hurt her, she now gets tangled up in an even greater mess. Because when the Pharisees find her and bring her to Jesus, now she's tangled up in a mess that's even bigger than the adultery. Because the Pharisees are looking for a reason to convict and accuse Jesus. They don't even care really what she did. They just care what Jesus is going to say about what she did. And I never thought that I could learn anything from the Pharisees until I read this text. Because sometimes we are so consumed with what we did that we don't care what Jesus says about what we did. But the Pharisees taught me a valuable lesson because they thought that they were setting her up for evil. But because they wanted to know what Jesus thought about what she did, they actually gave her the freedom that she needed to never get tied up anymore. If you really got that down in your soul, it would change the way you look at the things that you got tangled up in. There's somebody in this room who feels so burdened by what they got tangled up in that they haven't even stopped to ask Jesus, well, what do you think about what I got tangled up in? Because if you ever ask Jesus what he thinks about what you got tangled up in, he would say, I could get you out of that. I still think you're fearfully and wonderfully made. I think that no weapon formed against you will prosper. I think I'll get on the cross for what you got tangled up in. I think there's redemption for what you got tangled up in. I I think there's restoration for what you got tangled up in. When's the last time you got out of your own mind and your own confusion and asked Jesus, what, what do you say? What do you say about this that I've gone through? We let shame have a microphone. We let fear talk to us. We let those deadlines of where we should have been, those laws of what should have happened, by now I should be here. We let the law tell us where we should be, but we never ask grace, what can you do with where I am now? So the Pharisees did something that I'm learning to do. They took that woman who'd been tangled up and they threw it at the feet of Jesus. They threw her at the feet of Jesus. And because she's now thrown at the feet of Jesus, she has to hear what Jesus says about what she did. What I love about this, Day Stars, you would think that this was going to be the escalation of what she'd gone through. Oh, I feel this for somebody that you think that you're stepping into an escalation of a problem. But I hear God saying, I'm not escalating your problem. I'm just getting you to the feet of Jesus. 
I know it doesn't seem like that child is getting any better. It's all right. I'm just getting that child to the feet of Jesus. I know it looks like it's being escalated. It's not being escalated. It's just getting ready to bow down. It's just getting ready to be thrown down at my feet. I know it looks like all hell is breaking out, but I came here to tell you, St. Louis, all heaven is really about to break out. Because I'm getting ready to throw that thing at the feet of Jesus. The enemy meant it for evil, but God is using it for good. The Pharisees thought they had my girl. They didn't know that Jesus really had a plan for her. I wish I had some women in this room who knew the power of having something thrown at the feet of Jesus. just getting ready to make me bow. I've ran out of resources. That's a good thing. I don't have anybody to call. That's a good thing. I'm lonely. I'm stressed out. I'm feeling depressed. Don't nobody feel like shining with all this stress on me. That's all right because when I get finished throwing it at the feet of Jesus, I'm going to be covered in light. It ain't over yet. I'm not out of options yet. I know what the law said about where I should be, but grace got on a cross and gave me another option. I know I should be out of the game. I know I should have lost my mind, but... Somebody just threw something at the feet of Jesus. I hear the demons trembling. I hear hell getting nervous. The Pharisees thought they had her caught up. The bill company thought they had you caught up. That divorce thought it was gonna have the final say. This thing was supposed to be the death of her. God says this is not the death of you came to St. Louis to let somebody know. We not digging no graves around here. We don't do what hell tells us to do. If I'm still here, there's still some fight in me. I rebuke it right now in the name of Jesus. I hear God saying, put your shovel down. That thing is not going to be the death of you. I know a resurrecting Savior who brings back things to life. Get the room ready. The child is coming home. Get your heart ready. Your husband's on the way. Get the business ready. The finances are coming. This thing will not be the death of you. <laughs> I've been going through hell for like the last six weeks. I thought it was going to be the death of me. But it was really the rebirthing of me. Because I will never be the woman who was caught in those acts again. There are some things that you have been going through over the last six weeks that were meant to bury a version of you, not the totality of you. I hear God saying, I'll never be that woman again. I'm glad. 
glad I went through that. I'm glad I got tangled up in that because I'll never be that woman again. Addiction will never have me again. Suicide cannot have me. I'll never lose myself like that again. I'll never forget who I was like that again. I had to get tangled up with the wrong thing so I could get tangled up with the God version of who I am. Now they done messed around and let me know that I can survive a thing or two. They should have never let me know. And so, when this woman is caught in the act of adultery, Jesus doesn't say, leave her alone. He says, you can stone her if you are qualified. (laughs) If you're qualified to kill her, then you can kill her. But all you're qualified to do is scare her. You can't really kill her. Somebody's been thinking that that thing that scared you was actually going to kill you. And I hear God saying it's not even qualified. It's not even qualified to kill you. I know it scared you. I know it made you believe that you were down to nothing, but it's not even, it's not even qualified to take me out of here. So what Jesus' response reveals is that the law is fractured. The law is true that a woman should be stoned, but you have to be qualified in every area of the law in order to stone her. The law is fractured. That's important for you to understand because you're holding yourself to laws. I should be, should be there by now. That's law, law says I should be there by now. I shouldn't be still living paycheck to paycheck. I should have been able to close that deal. I should have been able to save my marriage. I shouldn't be the one in court. My child should be the one that knew Jesus. I was at church every single week. I shouldn't be in this situation, but, but the law is fractured. The law needed to be fractured so that everyone in the room can know what it's like to have broken a law. I know I didn't break the law that you broke, but baby, I done broke some laws. And what I love about Jesus is that he is a lawyer in the courtroom. Because he says, I know you broke a law, but I'm not gonna let that break you. And so he makes the Pharisees back up off of her. He makes the Pharisees back up off of her, but the only problem is this woman can be out of the situation, but in her mind she could still be condemned. Man, somebody's no longer even in that situation anymore, but I'm still carrying the weight and the shame because in my mind I got condemned. I love this because after he reveals that they're not even qualified to stone her, he then turns his attention to the woman and he says, where are those accusers of yours? He needs to make sure that she fully understands what has taken place around her because if he doesn't clarify it, then she could walk off still thinking that she's been condemned when he made sure that they backed up off of her. (laughs) 
Stop punishing yourself for something that God made back up off of you. You're still punishing that teenage version of who you are. You're still punishing that version of who you used to be. And I hear God saying, look around you, baby. I still blessed you after that. Look around you, baby. I made everything back up off of you. I wanted you to know, St. Louis, that I am done allowing you to pay the price for something that Jesus made back up off of you. I came here to set free your mind because what good is it if your experience changes but your mind your mind doesn't change that's not who you are anymore that's who you used to be and everybody has a used to be that's why they drop the stones you can make a decision right here tonight that you came in one way, but I'm leaving out of here another way. I know I said I was gonna meet you after this church thing, but that's who I used to be. I know I said I could handle this back and forth, but that's who I used to be. Never apologize for changing. Never apologize for evolving. I need you to know that it's okay to disconnect with who you used to be. I don't have to shrink any longer to make sure you can stay connected with me. That's who I used to be. And he could have said, Daystar, he could have said, woman, no one accuses you, no one condemns you, but instead he asked her a question because he needed to make sure that she understood what happened. But it wasn't enough that she understood it, she had to speak something back to him. The woman, my girl, she says, no one, Lord. No one, Lord condemned me. There was something about her opening her mouth and coming into alignment with the reality of what Jesus did. Somebody's been afraid to speak what Jesus did because they're afraid that if they speak it, they'll lose it. If I speak it, I'll be made fun of. If I speak it, maybe someone will make fun of me, but I hear God saying, I've untangled you from the politics and I've untangled your mind. The last thing I wanna untangle is your mouth. I came here to St. Louis because somebody has a praise that they've been keeping down on the inside of them for far too long. Somebody's got a purpose that they've been keeping down on the inside of them for far too long long. I'm actually an author. I know I work at the restaurant at day, but at nighttime I am an author. I'm bringing my mouth into alignment with what Jesus said about who I am. I want to give you 10 seconds to open up your mouth and to come into alignment with what Jesus has said about your family. I want you to take the microphone from fear. I want you to take the microphone from insecurity. And I want you for just a minute to come into alignment to let your mouth be a weapon so that we can come into alignment with what Jesus says. He says you're fearfully and wonderfully made. What is your report going to be? He says that cancer can't have my body. He says that depression can't have my mind. I got to open that mouth and speak a thing so that hell can hear me. That you can't have my mouth no more. You can't have my tongue no more. My child is saved. I dare 10 people to start prophesying over their marriages, to start prophesying over their business, to start prophesying over their heart. I am healed. I am whole. I am set free. I am delivered. Everything I touch will prosper in the name of Jesus. My child is saved. I've let fear talk to me for too long.
there will be glory in my house. My children will know who you are. This is not just a conference, this is a revolution. Daystar, I dare you to open up your mouth in your house. I believe that about 10 of us can set this world upside down. Where are my warrior women in this room? I believe the criminal justice system is gonna be fair. I believe that my nation will be saved. I believe that my church is gonna do great exploits in his name. I'm not just thinking about it, I'm talking about it. Cause when I start talking about it, I'ma start walking like it. And when I start walking like it, hell is gonna get nervous. Oh yeah, she messed around and got gangster with it at that conference. She thought she was coming for a cute praise, but she came to go to war for her family. She came to go to war for her destiny. She came to go to war with everything that's been going to war with her. Turn me up in this microphone. I'm trying to shake hell out of this place. My mouth agrees with what you say about me. My heart agrees with what you say about me. My mind agrees with what you say about me. I'm untangling myself from who I used to be. I'm untangling myself from what I used to think. I'm coming into alignment. Because if I'm going to be tangled up in anything, I'm going to be tangled up in something that helps me grow. That makes me better today than I was yesterday. And the only thing I know that can do that got on a cross 2,000 years ago. And 50 days after he got on that cross, there was a sound like a mighty rushing wind. The Holy Spirit fell on that day of Pentecost. Pentecost is Sunday, but I bet you if we make some noise in this place, that the Spirit could fall in here, and that strongholds would be broken, that chains would. I need the Holy Ghost over my house. I need the Holy Ghost over my depression. I can't do this on my own. I need the Holy Ghost for this. I need the Holy Ghost for this. I need your spirit to follow me. I need to be baptized for this. You can't go get a PhD for what I need. You can't go to the bank for what I need. I need the Holy Ghost for this. I'm out of options. I'm out of resources. I'm out of relationship. This thing I need, I can only get by baptism. Counseling is good, rehab is necessary, but sometimes what pushes you there is an encounter with the Holy Ghost, where you say to yourself, I can't keep living like this. I can't keep thinking like this. I gotta get off of this roller coaster. I gotta get off of this merry-go-round. It's time for me to shine for real. What I love about this text is when the woman comes into agreement with what Jesus did for her, he then says to her, go and sin no more. That Greek word that was translated go, the root of it in Greek really means to attempt slash experience. 
So a better translation would be experience and sin no more. I know that when he released this woman that one of her greatest fears as our fears tend to be is the conversation about what she got caught up in. He says to her that you can go and experience again. I love this because it proves to us that conversation is not condemnation. He draws a line in the sand. They can talk about you, but they can't condemn you. So don't worry about what they're talking about. Don't worry about what you're walking back into. Let them talk, but make sure they know that Jesus did it. You can talk about how I got set free. You can talk about how I dodged a bullet, but when you say my name, make sure you say his name too. You can talk about how I preach this message, but when you say my name, make sure you say his name too. Because I didn't do this thing by myself. So he sends her back into the place where there will be conversation. He says, but don't live one of those lives where you get set free and delivered but you don't have any new experiences because you're afraid of repeating the experience that you had before. Go attempt, go experience, try again. You messed up, that's okay. I didn't let it kill you. But don't live like I let it kill you. Don't live like I let it kill you. Find your way back to joy. Find your way back to love. Find your way back to happiness. Don't live like it killed you. Or you should have just let them stone you. You got to experience again. You got to try again. And you have to sin no more now. Us modern Christians would say, well, I don't know if I can say I won't sin again because sin is just a part of the nature. No, no, no. He says, set a mark for yourself that says I'm not going to miss again. And don't let your fear of missing again make you talk yourself out of it before you even get started. He says, go experience and sin no more. Because that's what I think is possible for you. This woman in this text, she went from being tangled up, quite literally, to tangled up with what Jesus thinks about her and how Jesus sees her. And now that she has been tangled up in him, he changed her mind and he brought her mouth into alignment and he taught her how to walk again and he taught her how to live again. You're here so that you can get tangled up with Jesus. Because God was looking at us from the heavens. And he said, that is a mess down there. But I'm going to wrap myself up in flesh. I'm going to get tangled up in flesh and muscles and bones. I'm going to get tangled up so that I can come down there and untangle this mess that they've gotten themselves into. So when Jesus then says that he is the light of the world and anyone who walks with him will not walk in darkness, he's saying I got tangled up in this human body so that I could untangle a few thousand women, a few million people in St. Louis and around the world so that they wouldn't have to get tangled up again. And I know that God gave me this message. And I know that I am in the right place and in the right room and at the right time. I know that there are some women in this room who came in here tangled up with some fears 
and some insecurities and some addictions. My life is a mess. I got tangled up. I didn't even mean to get tangled up. I just never had a vision for my life. And because I didn't have a vision, there are parts of my life that feel like they are perishing. I didn't have a vision for my heart. I didn't have a vision for my body. And now it's got tangled up in some situations and some opportunities that are honestly trying to take me out of here. But I want you to know tonight that there is a man named Jesus who is still in the business of untangling the most tangled messes. That there is a man named Jesus who says, I can fix that. I can change that. I can handle that. And that that thing that is trying to take you out has not been qualified. It's not qualified to do it. I can tell you, I look back over my life at all of the things that should have disqualified me from this moment, all of the things I got tangled up in that should have disqualified me from being here. But something happened when I just got thrown at the feet of Jesus. Isn't it crazy how sometimes you don't even throw yourself at the feet of Jesus? That somebody, some situation will just throw you at the feet of Jesus? Somebody shouldn't even be at this conference, but somebody's friend said, Girl, come on and get your raggedy self in this car so I can throw you at the feet of Jesus. Somebody's praying grandmother threw him at the feet of Jesus. Somebody's pastor, somebody's social media threw them at the feet of Jesus. I didn't get here because I wanted to be here. I got here because somebody else threw me at the feet of Jesus. And he untangled everything that she shouldn't have even been in and the things that she got herself in. Because sometimes we get tangled up in things that are not our fault. I'm sorry about the things that you got tangled up in that changed you. I'm sorry your parents couldn't be there. I'm sorry they couldn't love you the way that they were supposed to love you. I'm sorry that that friend betrayed you. I'm sorry that it's 30 years later and you're still dealing with the wounds of what someone else did to you. I'm sorry you got tangled up in somebody else's brokenness. But Jesus said, I can fix that too. I, I know it hurts you, but if you turn it over to me, I can make all things work together for your good. I know you were a victim and all of it, but that's all right because you're going to have victory as a result of it. You're going to help somebody who you never could have helped had you not got tangled in that. And then there are some women in this room who got themselves in a mess. And because you got yourself in it, you want to be grown enough to get yourself out of it. But there are some things that you get in that you cannot get out of unless it is thrown at the feet of Jesus. I don't know which one you are, but I want to pray. And if you know for a fact that one of those women, one of those things that I listed are you, I want you to stand in solidarity with me. I want you to stand in agreement. And I want you to stand as a sign that you are coming into alignment with what God says about you. Heavenly Father, I'm throwing these women at the feet of Jesus. Father, I've taken them as far as I can take them. Now it is on you. So Spirit of the living God, I ask that you fall in this place like never before. That strongholds would be broken. That chains would be coming down. They start, I'm touching and believing wherever you are. The glory of God is in this place. I pray that you would have a breakthrough like never before. That the power of God would fall and unleash your perspective and unleash your mouth. That you would walk out of this place different than you were before. Break a stronghold that means break a tangle break a chain that means break a tangle and God when we get ready to get connected again let us be connected with that which only grows us so God I'm asking that it starts in our own mind and then that it would touch our lips and then that it would change the way that we walk in this world 
God, I want to be new and I want to walk in newness. And so, God, I'm asking that you would not just do it for me, but that you would do it for every woman connected to me. And that as we walk together and as we grow together, that we would no longer walk in darkness, but that we would walk in the kind of light that can only come when we are tangled with you. Do it in every area of our life. Seal this word. Let no fear, let no anxiety, let no insecurity or depression take it from us. For who the Son has set free, my God is free indeed. In Jesus' name, amen. just say words. What a word.